Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Galerkin method for a 2D solid. Now, a bit of fair warning, we're not going to get all the way to a stiffness matrix this time. We're just going to work through the differential equation and the process of integration by parts and end up with something that we can use in the next video to build that stiffness matrix. So our starting point is to determine the differential equation. And in order to do that, we need to look at a differential element, which has a width delta x and a height delta y. And we're interested in the stresses on this element. And so we're going to look at our normal stresses in the x and y direction, which are sigma x and sigma y. And we're going to evaluate these at positions x and x plus delta x for sigma x, and at y and y plus delta y for sigma y. Now these aren't all of our stresses. We also need to look at the shear stresses tau xy. So at the bottom here, we're going to have tau xy evaluated at y. This will be tau xy evaluated at x. And then we'll evaluate it at x plus delta x and y plus delta y. Finally, let's add a body force, which is most commonly something like gravity, where everything is applied to the entire solid. And what we're going to be doing to this element is just applying the equation sum of the forces is equal to zero. So let's start off looking at the sum of the forces in the x direction. So first off, we're going to have our normal stresses. So this is our sigma x at x plus delta x, and then our sigma x evaluated at x. And of course, those are pushing in opposite directions, and so we account for that with the minus sign. Now these are stresses, and we're looking for forces, so we need to multiply by an area. And that area is going to be this distance delta y, multiplied by our distance into the page, which we'll call h. Next, we'll account for the shear stresses. And the shear stresses in the x direction are the shear stress on the top and bottom. So this will be tau xy evaluated at y plus delta y minus tau xy evaluated at y. And these are multiplied by the area delta x multiplied by h. And then finally, we need the component of this body force in the x direction. And this is multiplied by the entire volume, so that'll be delta x, delta y, h. And the sum of the forces is going to be equal to 0. Now to simplify this, we're going to divide through by the volume, which is this delta x, delta y, and h. So in the first term, the delta y, h cancels. Second term, the delta x and h cancel. And in the third term, the entire thing cancels. Now let's run through the same thing for y. In this case, we're looking at sigma y. And this will be multiplied by the distance delta x. And then our shear stresses, this time along the sides. And these are multiplied by delta yh. And then to finish up, we have our body force in the y direction which again is multiplied by the volume. Once again, we divide through by that volume, this time leaving the delta y in the first term, the delta x in the second term, and nothing in the third term. Now, of course, when we're talking about a differential element, what we're saying here is that this delta x and delta y are very small. And so as these things become tiny, we can replace them with a derivative. So this term in our x force equation is going to be d by dx of sigma x. And likewise, this term is going to be d by dy of tau xy. We add in our body force, and that'll be equal to 0. Then we can do the same thing for the second equation, d by dy of sigma y plus d by dx of tau xy plus b of y is equal to 0. 
And now we're going to do something a little weird in order to prepare for our Galorkin method. The first two terms of our differential equation can actually be written as a gradient operator dotted with a vector sigma x and tau xy. And then we'll leave this piece alone. And that's still going to be equal to 0. And we'll do the same thing over here. So we'll have our gradient operator. And this time our d by dx is multiplying the tau xy. So that one goes on top. So we'll have a tau xy and a sigma y. What we're doing next is applying the Galerkin method, where we take that shape function psi i and then integrating over the entire element. So in both cases, psi i is multiplying the entire differential equation, and then the integration happens over this element omega. So we're just calling this entire element omega. So now's a good time to take a little deviation from the path and talk a little bit more about our stresses. So for a 2D solid, we have three stresses that we're looking at, and we can compare them to strains by looking at a constitutive matrix. And this matrix is different depending if we're talking about plane stress or plane strain. But in both cases, it's going to be three by three, transforming these three strains into these three stresses. And of course, these strains are defined as derivatives of our displacements. What this means for us is that there's actually a hidden derivative when we're talking about our stresses because we want to be able to get everything down to a differential equation based solely on our displacements. So this tau xy, this sigma y, this sigma x, all of these have this extra derivative associated with them. So in actuality, this is a second order differential equation because we have a derivative here and we have this derivative here. Now, the key part of solving with the Galorkin method is that we want to balance the number of derivatives between our displacements and our shape function. So we are going to move this gradient over to the shape function by applying integration by parts. And the key idea behind integration by parts is just the product rule. Now, in this case, we're using the product rule using the divergence operator, the gradient dotted with this vector. But the idea is the same as how this works in 1D. So the gradient operator dotted with this vector is going to be equal to our psi i being left alone, multiplied by the divergence of sigma x and tau xy. And this is exactly what we have in our differential equation. And then the other piece is going to take the gradient of psi and dot that with that vector. And this is the piece that has those balanced derivatives. So next we're going to solve for this piece and substitute it into our equation over here. So what that looks like is an integration over our omega, this time of this divergence of psi i multiplied by sigma x tau xy minus this other piece, which is our gradient of psi i dotted with sigma x and tau xy. And then, of course, we need to include the body force term. Now, this first term is actually a statement of the divergence theorem. And so we're able to write this out as an integral not on omega, but on the boundary of omega. And this will be the vector that we have here. So this is psi i multiplied by sigma x tau xy. And that's going to be dotted with the normal of our boundary times the differential area. Now to take another brief side note, let's talk about what this actually means for just a second. So let's say that we have some body and the outer surface of this body has some tractions associated with it. 
And so we can separate out those tractions into some normal stress sigma x and some shear stresses tau xy. But in the end, what we're interested in is the dot product of those two things with the normal, which is just the outward pointing vector of this surface. And so we take the x component of this normal, multiply it by sigma x, the y component of this normal, multiply it by tau xy, and that will give us the traction on that outer surface, at least in the x direction. And just because I drew these tau xy's in the y direction, realize that they're occurring both in x and y. I just drew them that way because we're looking at the y component of our normal vector whenever we are calculating this part. So all that to say, that's how this first term is going to come into play. The second term is a bit simpler. It just stays a straightforward integration of our shape function and our body force term. So that piece doesn't change. So there's either gravity or some other distributed body force that is acting on this thing and we're just looking at the x components for the x direction. And then this last piece, we're going to move to the other side. And this is eventually what is going to become our stiffness matrix multiplied by our displacement vector. Now, like I said, we're not going to get all the way there this time, but this single piece is going to be the subject of the entire next video. So this is the sum of the forces in the x, we can also write the sum of the forces in the y. So again, we're going to have the integration on the boundary of our psi i multiplied by a vector, but this time the vector that we're looking at is this tau xy sigma y. And that'll again be dotted with n hat dA. The body force term looks really similar to the x equation. And then the part that we're putting off until next time is still that gradient of psi i, this time dotted with tau xy sigma y. So this was the derivation of a differential equation on a 2D solid, the application of the Galerkin method, and then integration by parts in order to even out the derivatives. So now we have a single derivative on our shape function here, and a single derivative hidden in the stresses on our displacements in this vector. That is as far as we are going today. The next video will focus on turning these two pieces of the equation, these two terms at the end, into our stiffness matrix multiplied by a vector of displacements. That is all for this time. I hope this was informative and I will catch you in the next video.